Hi students, let's talk a little bit about compound interest and different ways of compounding interest. So <clears throat> if you look at our textbook, again, our business calculus OER textbook, you can see that there are two formulas here. So one is the compound interest formula. You apply this when you know the rate of compounding, you know the compounding, the number of compounding periods, and you know the duration of the loan or the investment, meaning how many years or how many days even it could be. We also have a continuous compounding formula, which is an exponential expression. And it's, think of it as a computer, of course, would have to do this because we could never manually apply interest to an amount all the time. So it's what it's, banks use this, um, depends on the type of investment you're making or loan that you're making. Usually loans will be compounded uh, at a certain rate and it varies. That's, it just depends on your provider of the loan or the investment, but it could be continuously compounded. It's not to the bank's advantage, so normally they would do some other type of compounding, maybe a daily compounding, because it would mean less interest for you if they compounded it at less amount, fewer amount of times. So let's look at this example. Switch back to just me. So let's look at this example. Let's switch back to full screen here. So I want to find the accumulated amount, which is our A of T, our function value. After three years, if $1,000 is invested at 8% per year, and then compounded in different ways, we can choose to see what kind of effects this would have. So let's look at A. So A is annual compounding. That means that the number of compounding periods is going to be equal to 1. So let me just put an A here and then N equals 1. So we'll calculate A of T, our amount, our accumulated amount, given that the principal is $1,000. And then that'll be times 1 plus R, 8%. We have to write, anytime we calculate with percentages, we have to use, convert it first to a decimal and use the decimal in the formula. So we'll have here 0 0.08 divided by N, N is 1, and then raised to the 1 times the number of years given is 3. So if I can simplify this, this will be A of T is equal to 1,000 times 1.08 to the third power. When you calculate that, make sure I have the right one, you should get that our function's value, the accumulated value is 1,200 $59.71. Okay. Let's look at B. Now we want to change the com number of compounding periods. If it's quarterly, it means that four times a year we'll be compounding this money to apply the interest to it. Keep in mind when you apply, when you compound more than once a year, you're basically, you know, you're compounding it the first quarter, adding the interest, so you're raising the amount that you have in there for the principal. And then you apply the interest again next quarter, you're raising the amount, so you're making it bigger and bigger. Applying the interest means that you are growing your money, and that's the value and the beauty of compounding. So here, n is going to be equal to 4. That's the only thing changing here. Everything else is the same. So let's rewrite our function. So we have 1,000, 1 plus, same interest rate of 0 0.08, 8%, divided now by 4. 
raised to the 4 times 3 because it's n times t up here. So we're raising it to the 12th power. Definitely need a good scientific calculator to do this work for you. So 1.08 divided by 4 should be 0 0.02. Adding the 1, 1 1.02, raising it to the 12th power. And you should get, let's see, that your accumulated amount is $1,268.24. Now look at the difference between the first answer and the second answer. You can see it's it's they're close but they're not exactly the same. You get a little bit more money, about $8 and change left, more. You get a little bit more money if you go and use, compound this more often, raising your compounding periods to four in one year instead of one. Let's see what happens when you now compound this money monthly going to pause right here so I can erase. So students, let's continue our work with finding the accumulated amount. This time our compounding is going to be monthly, which means that n is equal to 12. Applying n in the formula, inputting it for n, 12 for n, here and in the exponent. Our interest rate still 0.08. Our principal is still $1,000 we're starting with. Our time of investment is three years. So simplifying here, I'm not going to simplify this fraction because it's, it's not a terminating decimal and I don't want to lose precision. So how you see this here is exactly how you should be inputting this into your calculator. So let me write like a note of what you would do. A thousand times, and then open a parentheses, 1 plus 0 0.08 divided by 12, close parentheses, and then you should have some sort of button, a caret, or it could be a y to the x or x to the y. It just depends on your calculator that will raise a quantity to a power. And using our order of operations, what's first in PEMDAS is parentheses. So what's inside the parentheses will be calculated and evaluated first in your calculator if you write it just like this, start to finish. I don't need to have parentheses around this division. I could. It's never wrong to put parentheses, and they're always free to use. But order of operations will take precedence here. Division is higher. Let me write my little PEMDAS reminder here. This is how I write PEMDAS. Parentheses, of course, means that we land here first, and the calculator will do the work here first. But you can see multiplication and division are higher than addition or subtraction. So because of that, the division will be evaluated first, and then one will be added to that result. Multiplied then by 1,000, Oh, I'm sorry, raised to the, to the 36th power first and then multiplied by 1,000 because exponents are higher than multiplication. So doing it this way, your calculator will get the right answer. And so that you know, the answer for this problem is $1,270.24. cents. Please understand we're rounding these to the hundredths place because of the fact that we have money here. We have dollars and cents. We'll go on to the next problem after I erase the board. Let's look at a compounding period now of daily. So meaning that every day the money will be that interest earned will be applied to the principal. 
We let that be 365 days. Now we do know that every four years there's a leap year so that we do have 366 days those years. Now a, calc a computer doing this would know, would have logic in it to determine if it's a leap year or not. But for our purposes, we'll just use 365 and that's perfectly fine. So to calculate our accumulated amount, we will take our 1,000 principal, and then once again, interest rate is still 8%. N is now 365, raising it to the 365 times our three years, our T, so times T. I'm not going to simplify that fraction again because it will, it may not be a terminating decimal. So I'll just leave it as is. And I'm looking for my answer. So 365 times 3 should be 1,095. So just like the problem before, you'll want to put this directly into the calculator just as you see it, including the parentheses, so that when you calculate it, you will get the answer of 1,271 dollars and 22 cents. Slightly more, not even a dollar, less than a dollar more than it was for compounding monthly. So, which is kind of a surprise. You would think that compounding it every day, that thousand dollars would be worth a lot more money. And you really only get cents more. But keep in mind, if you're investing $10 million, that little change in compounding period would have a big effect on you. We have one more to do, which is our continuous compounding. We're going to use a different formula for that. So students, let's now apply the idea of continuously compounding this um, situation, this $1,000, using a different formula. We're going to use this that I call PERT. It's P E raised to the R times T. So our P, our principal, is still $1,000. E is our exponential function. We'll be using this in our calculator to raise it to a power. R is still 0 0.08 times T, three years. I could simplify it a little bit. 1,000 e to the 0.24 power. When I calculate this, I will get that the accumulated amount, our A of t function, is $1,271.25. By the way, these calculations may be a little different in the last digit. For you, depending on the type of calculator you're using, how many digits that calculator contains for numbers inside the calculator. You know, if it has a lot of precision, it keeps a lot of digits, you could have a little bit different answer. Or if it takes, if it keeps a lot of digits, you could have a little different answer. Or if it keeps fewer di digits inside the calculator, you could also have a different answer. So just keep that in mind. Um, if you remember from our daily compounding uh, problem, that answer was $1,271.22. So daily compounding compared to continuously compounding, there's not that much difference. So keep that in mind when you're compounding millions of dollars for your next investment. Bye, students.